Your life works. When the white man first came to North America, a great part of the continent was clothed in majestic forests. Wherever soil and climate were, trees flourished in countless numbers. But to the early settlers, trees were a barrier. They were something to be destroyed, to be gotten out of the way so that the land could be turned to agriculture. Except for fuel and for log cabins and barns, little use was made of trees that fell to the settlers' axe. Most of them were stacked and burned. But as America grew and the frontier was pushed rapidly back, many sawmills were established to make the vast quantities of lumber needed for building of a nation. The sawmills devoured trees by the millions. To feed them, the loggers slashed into the virgin forests with little or no thought for the future. They left scenes of desolation as they moved on to new forests to be despoiled. But wasteful logging was not the only enemy of the forest. Fire due chiefly to man's carelessness, ate up thousands upon thousands of acres. Finally, destruction of this natural resource reached the point where America awakened to the need for conservation. In 1891, Congress began setting aside large tracts of timber as national forest reserves and watersheds. These national forests now exceed 160 million acres, and state and private holdings add millions more. But the fact that some of these tracts are called reserves does not mean that no trees are cut. For trees are like any crop. They must be harvested when mature. Otherwise, they rot away and are wasted. The important thing is to harvest the big trees without killing the young ones, or to leave enough mature trees to reseed the area again. So today, the government and some forest industries are cooperating on a program designed to ensure a continuous supply of timber and steady, well-paid employment. There are nearly a million persons engaged in harvesting, processing, and distributing forest products. A comparatively small number of persons are engaged in protecting and managing our forests, and the opportunities for employment are limited. The experts in this field, the professional foresters, are employed by federal, state, and local government agencies, or by private companies. For private employment, College training in forestry is not required, though it is preferred. Permanent government positions are filled by civil service examinations and require college training with at least two years of technical forestry subjects. But regardless of the employing agency, the fields of work are similar. Protecting the forest from fire is one of a forester's greatest responsibilities. He organizes and manages a fire prevention system consisting of lookout stations, telephone lines, and firefighting crews and equipment. And when fire strikes, it's his duty to stick with his crew until it is put out. Some burnt over areas can be reforested to get them back into production. The forester helps to plan the work and supervises the planting of the seedlings. Every year, millions of heads of livestock graze on the nation's forests. It is part of some forester's work to see that the range is not damaged by overgrazing. Permits are issued allowing only a certain number of sheep or cattle into the area. Foresters are also concerned with the wildlife that lives in the forest. They help to administer state game laws, offer recommendations as to protection and other phases of wildlife management. Forests provide recreation grounds where people may experience healthful outdoor life. The forester helps the public to enjoy the forest, but must see that users do not harm it. Educating the public is part of his job. Trees are subject to injury by disease and insects. Studying these pests and working out ways to combat them is another field of activity for the forester. Before logging operations start in an area, a forester or his assistants go over it carefully, selecting and marking those trees which are to be felled. And later, when logging starts, a forester watches to see that no unnecessary damage is done. Some foresters do research work with wood products to find new or better ways to utilize them. This work is of great benefit, 
because it means less waste of our forest resources. There are many other occupational duties in professional forestry, but basically they all call for men with certain abilities, interests, and attitudes. To be a forester, you should enjoy outdoor work and be interested in growing things. You must have good health and be ready to endure discomfort and occasional hardships. You must be willing to work under lonely conditions, but also enjoy contact with the public and be able to impress them with the importance of activities requiring their cooperation. And you must attend one of the schools in the United States offering technical forestry courses. Employment in the forest industries for others than foresters covers a wide range of skills and training. In logging, for instance, engineers and surveyors are needed to plan the methods by which the logs will be hauled from the woods to the mill. This often entails the laying out of railroads or truck roads. Skilled woods workers, commonly called lumberjacks, do the actual cutting. This is hard work, and it is often carried on in bad weather. In the old days, these men were not paid very well, and their living conditions were poor. But today, in most cases, they are well paid and provided with comfortable camps and good food. They also have modern machinery to aid in making the work easier and in getting the logs out of the woods faster. At the mill, the logs are dumped into a storage pond. Storing them in water protects them from drying out too quickly and also makes it easier to sort them before they go into the mill. This job requires a fine sense of balance, as well as a knowledge of various species of trees. In the mill, each log is placed on the carriage, a moving platform which brings the log into contact with a saw which cuts off a board on each trip. The head sawyer's job is a very important one. He decides the best way to cut each log and signals indicating the thickness of the board to be cut. The man on the carriage quickly adjusts it, following the instructions of the head sawyer. From the head saw, the boards move to the edger saw, which cuts off the rounded, irregular sides. The trimmer saw operator must make split-second decisions. He cuts each board so that the greatest amount of high-grade lumber is produced. The rough boards come out of the mill on a long conveyor chain and are sorted by men who are trained to recognize different grades at a glance. The freshly cut boards must be carefully dried or seasoned. Sometimes they are piled in a large seasoning yard. This method, known as air drying, requires several months. The modern and faster way is to put the lumber in special kills, where hot air and steam dry it in a few days. Some seasoned lumber goes next to a planing mill where it is smoothed and cut to patterns or is made into special materials such as window frames and doors. The manufacture of plywood is a forest industry that employs many persons. However, work in the mills and in the woods is quite similar to that in lumbering. There are also mills specializing in making veneers for furniture and woodwork. Some of these companies use rare woods from all over the world. Then there is the production and processing of pulp wood into paper. This industry uses thousands of skilled workers. In any forest industry, whether it be producing lumber or other products, there are fine positions as superintendents or executives for those who are efficient and have the necessary training or education. But of course, you have to start at a lower level and work up. In the distributing end of the industry, the local building material dealers require many employees. The establishment of a lumber yard of your own would be a fine goal. But you must know the business, have enough capital, and choose a good location. It would be best to work for someone else until you learn the business thoroughly. Thus, the forest industries and the field of forestry offer a great variety of opportunities. However, you must consider the fact that some activities, especially the government agencies, require comparatively few new men each year. If you do go into forestry or one of the industries, you will be part of work that has a future. For the aim of all foresters and far-sighted owners of timberlands is a perpetual supply of products through proper management. It would be well for you to investigate the opportunities in this field. 
perhaps employment in forestry or one of the forest industries will become your life work.